Hello everybody, welcome to Good Artist Steel. My name's Ian Ellis and I'm just going to go through the colours mix, colour mixing for Vincent van Gogh's chair. Um, previous videos we looked at this painting, uh, Cypress Tree and the cornfield here. And uh, what we'll find is that the, the interiors or the, the still life paintings by Vincent van Gogh are quite similar. I just see, you'll see these, these kind of colours working um, the sky color the green and the, the the cornfield very similar to that so which influenced which I mean uh, was it was it landscape or uh, or was it just his colors the intensity of his colors we paint everything with it but for me that's more like landscape colors for an interior um, and what I'm going to do I'm just going to go through um, ways of mixing these colors but what I don't have is uh, a restorer's information for this so we did have for this painting but we don't have it for that one. Um, so what I'm going to do is just try and see how I can get those colors using two color mixing, which we know Van Gogh used partly for this one, um, but just to show you, so I'll help you learn two color mixing skills. And if I, if I can't get it with the colors of Van Gogh's palette, I will go into using the third color or three or four colors. But when I'm using three or four colors, I'm still be using the idea of two color mixing and I'll explain that um, as I'm doing it, okay? Um, anyway, the palette I've listed up here, it's the Viridian Green, it's here, the uh, Emerald Green. Cadmium Yellow I've put instead of Chrome Yellow. Um, and I've got also here, I've got an orange, uh, Chrome Orange, which I'm using Cadmium Orange um, in between these two. And I've got Vermilion Red. Um, instead of Red Lake, I've got a more modern color, Elizabeth and Crimson. And then I've got French ultramarine blue and cobalt blue. White's not included in two color mixing. White's used as an extra uh, color to lighten things. <clears throat> now, if you're still not sure about how I line these colors up, you can go back and look at my uh, other video where I explain the color theory behind this. Um, but it's something that you'll find that if you keep practicing, you start getting the idea of it. And obviously, I just keep repeating things as well. That's really important. The repetition of uh, mixing and getting to know colors can be a bit tedious. But if you want to learn, this is what you've got to do. Um, so I'm actually looking at a painting um, by Vincent van Gogh, which is quite similar in colors to the cypress trees. And uh, so I'm just going to have a start off with the easy colors, just looking at the, the yellow in the painting on the chair. Um, that's a kind of looks to me quite a warm yellow and what I'm trying to do in each color I'm mixing I'm trying to identify what color it is now I've got all these colors lined up here <clears throat> that's a yellow and you can see it it looks like a slightly warmer yellow than this yellow to me um, so what I'm going to do is try and make, find a color that's in between these two you might need a bit of orange with it to, to move it but it also looks like it's quite a bit of white with it so the, 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 it looks a bit dead compared to that color, so, but it's not dark and so I think the white will... Look. So I'm going to just do a little bit of mixing. Use my smaller palette knife for that, for mixing. A spatula one I find very useful for mixing. So I'm just going to bring in a tiny bit of orange with that just to move the yellow over. And then lots of white. So that, again, it's very simple, a very obvious two color mixing. We will, we, most people would do this. We would just look at the color quite intuitively. You would use that to get these colors still more white. That's the, just a little bit more white there. And I've got that. I'm gonna put the colors over this side so you can see them all in relation to each other. Now, in, in the cornfield cypress trees, we found that this color in the sky was a kind of brilliant green, just was white. So I'm gonna have a quick go and see if I can get the color just using brilliant green and white. Looks to me though, it's going towards more of a yellow. I'm actually, th I think the colors, this color is kind of moving over towards more of a yellow, but just see what we get when we put the brilliant green with it. Just a tiny bit of a, and you can see this looks closer to that color over that side. Looks a bit too green for that, but that's far, that's far too cool. It's a, this, this green looks like there's more yellow in it. So what I'm going to do is to add a bit of this yellow to it. 
So I'm getting a colour that's very rich. And uh, again, the, the, you destroy the colour by using white paint. Remember, white paint is, uh, destroys the quality of the colour. Uh, same way black does, same way grey would. Um, a complementary colour would destroy it as well. Um, so white, if sometimes you kinda, you've got a mix of colours that look too bright, then you start adding white to it. It will calm it, calm it down. Got quite a lot of white there. And it doesn't know no, the intensity of the colour goes, as well as the lightness. It goes lighter, the darkness of the colour goes lighter. I'm getting colours quite close to that. I still put a bit more white with it. The white will make it a bit cooler as well. I thought it was a bit cooler colour. So I've got these colours lovely within that. Now, um, looking at the next colour, getting a bit more complicated are the colours on the uh, on the floor there and also within the uh, the seating, the, the wicker chair there. Now, some of these colours look like yellow ochre. Um, but because this is quite an, an early painting by Vincent van Gogh uh, when he was in Arles, apparently he was sticking to this palette. The ochres he perhaps started using later, but, but I don't know this for sure. Obviously, I'm just guessing. But how do we mix this colour, this ochre, the dark ochre, using those colours? Uh, best way of doing it, again, is to look at the colour, identify what colour, where would you place it if you're going to place it in that line. Um, I think most of you would say it's somewhere between the orange and the yellow, so it's a kind of, uh, I would call that a yellow orange. So I've got to think about how can I use these colours to get the yellow orange. Uh, I've got one side of it, I've got the orange and the yellow, mix those together, it'll be too bright. So remember with colour theory and two colour mixing, you start going further apart and you might finally get the colour. So if I stay with orange, I can go further apart, go towards the yellow. Um, sorry, sorry, the emerald green. And if you use the emerald green with the orange, do we get that? So I'm just going to a little, little test. Tiny bit of the... Oh, that's going very dark. But what I can do is put, put some white with it. Just running out of white. Now, this is a, a like a, a very dark uh, shade of yellow orange. It's like a dark ochre um, within that. So what I can do is just mix those two together, which is the the brighter the brighter colour. Add it to that. So I've gone too dark, but I want to get one brighter. I won't be able to get anything brighter than that because those are about the closest two I've got to that yellow. So what I'm going to do now is actually add these two together to get the yellow orange. So I've not gone to the opposite colour. I've not used the red and the green or one of those that are orange and blue to get the dark colour. I'm staying really in this small area within that. Going too dark with those two and then I can use this colour to make the ochre. Now it's got a bit green but you see some greens in there. Just go a bit darker with it. I can use more white. That's the green area within there, I'm just using it, a bit more white needed, these are really quite complex subtle colours you've got there, um, I've got that, so that's my green colour I'm bringing in, and it slightly moves towards the orange, so I'm just going to move that over towards the orange. So I'm staying within the, again, I'm just these three colours there. Again, a little bit more white with that. And I'm getting these uh, colours on the chair there. So you get this combination. We get that orange against that green. They're very close to each other, slightly moving across. That's more of a shade of yellow, kind of lemon yellow going towards orange. That's more of a shade of the yellow orange going in there. They're lovely colours, aren't they? Really working very subtle, with, with, with very subtle colours. And thrown in that is some of these kind of stronger greens I've mixed earlier. Thrown in 
So it's a sort of link up the painting. Um, also, he's got some of these dark uh, browns coming in the painting. Uh, could I get that dark brown? Is it is a dark brown? If you got some of these dark browns, you might find in there. I suspect that's the colour underneath the painting. If you look underneath from the edges of the painting, oh, I was actually looking at the National Gallery. I'm fortunate to say it's not far from me. It's only about five miles away. I went and had a look at it, and I could see that underneath the painting, this really rich dark red brown, and a lot of the colour of that background colour came through quite a lot of the painting, which helps hold it together. But it's mixed some of these colours, similar colours down here. I suspect the reason for that is actually lost the background colour. It's had to bring it back and actually make copy the colour that's in the background. So um, again, so I can actually mix this colour down here. What colour is that? Um, again, it's a dark brown, dark red brown. If you were looking at those colours, maybe it's a dark vermilion. Are these other dark vermilion just going a bit darker? If he's getting these colours getting darker like that, I suspect he's using two complementaries because the reds stay in the same red, but it's getting darker. So if you're using vermilion with an emerald green, you might get the dark, the green will darken the red the way black would darken the red. Uh, so just using those two colours, start with the red, it's a vermilion, tiny bit of the just a tiny bit, see that? That's how it makes it really, goes really dark, and we're off. It's off to there. Still a bit more intense, but some of these colors are just a little bit too, too, too rich at the moment. I'm just gonna put a little bit of white with it. White's a bit dodgy color to put with red. It can look a bit, can look a bit, if you're not careful, go a little bit uh, chalky. And I'm getting these colours, they're lovely, down for, against the, uh, the, the ochre colours and the, the ochre, on these green ochres we see in there against that. And um, <clears throat> now the even darker colour, just adding more emerald. And not lose, if you can see it's starting to go grey, if it's complementary that's what you should do. It's a way of recognising you've got a complementary colour. If you, it's just but you should be able to mix a black. If you can't get a black, you've not got complementary. Uh, these colours are just going just a little bit too much green. It's gone a bit too dark a brown. It's lost the colour a little bit. So I'm just bring back the red again. Remember, only using two colours. Bring it in. I'm getting these rich browns that come in. It's within that. Now. Within these, I was just mentioning before, there's some dark green ochres in there. Again, is that the same combination we used before? Um, using the orange and the green. Um, if I use the orange and green. Letting the green dominate, bring the orange in. More orange. More orange still. I can see it's moving across the, I would say that was a shade of yellow. It's something like a shade of that color. So if I keep adding orange to it, it goes over to the shade of that. So uh, let me get these dark ochres, a bit more white with them. Still look too dark to me. I mean, um, the two color mixing I've used there, I'm not sure it's the way Van Gogh would have mixed that color because it's too dark, it's too gray. And what we do find is, um, and some in the painting when we looked at the uh, the um, cypresses and the cornfield painting, is that he was using uh, black uh, to greater black, he'd make a black and add it to the yellow and slightly change it, so we wouldn't be using two color mixing to do this. I've tried to do that. It's not far off, there's some of these colours in there, but what I'm going to do to brighten it, I've just had the yellow to it. So it's just a different way, I think, that the way Van Gogh would have used. I've just brightened it up slightly with the colour. So I think what's the lovely thing about two colour mix, you can even if you go too dark, you've got the colour you're, you're using, you're trying to mix, I'm mixing a shade of dark yellow for these. So I've tried to get it with two colours on side. If it's not bright enough, I add that third colour. And I think that's uh, giving me those lovely ochre colours there, which are ochre greens. 
within the painting and you put those next to those colors and there's a really bright yellow green there that looks to me like a emerald green and yellow or, or a viridian and yellow to get these really intense colors again we found that when we looked at the two color mixing of the painting of the the wheat field we did in the cypress and, and, and the cornfield i'm just looking at that again so right i think i'm just getting some edges there's some blue lines around there as well um, we, again, uh, what's that? Just cobalt blue and white, as in the previous painter. And when the, the restorers told us that's what he was doing, just using these colours. So well, that's uh, ultramarine blue. Just take a little bit of the cobalt blue, and you get this colour that goes around the yellow. It's a bit more intense. That goes around the yellow um, sketch around the, the bit there. And this drawn green at the top, is that just using Viridian green and the ultramarine blue? Just a bit further away. And white. Lots more white. And more white needed. The thing about blue, it doesn't lose its quality when you keep adding white. It still looks beautiful. Some colours tend to have that, uh, they don't seem to get hammered by white. This is something you're going to discover the more the more you do your painting. You know, just a bit more viridian green in there just to get it back over. But wow, what colour, what great colours, don't you think? This is the colour for this. You've got these really fantastic colours in relation to, to all these here. I'm ready to start my painting. That's going to be the next one. I'm going to do a copy of this painting just to show you the technique. And also we're going to look at like how, again, why did this painting glow? What are the theories behind that? Um, so why is he selected those killers? Is there any logic behind that? So we've got two videos to look at, so look out for them. And don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed this video. There's lots more. So bye everybody. Bye for now.